you know, sometimes it's, it's very difficult to talk about some of the more important issues. And, you know, it's just one of those things we have to do in life sometimes. So I've got a leaky rear end and, and you know, they, they gave me this to try, but I'm not so sure that's going to solve the problem. So. All right, I know that was totally corny and cheesy, but um, today is the day I'm finally gonna try to get this rear diff pulled out. Just a quick update on what's going on with the FD. Um, I did drive it the other day. Um, it's probably been, I've probably driven it about three or four times in the last two weeks, like, you know, an extended period of time. And I, I'm definitely having some clutch issues. The, uh, you know, the, 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 the clutch slave and all the work that I've done uh, recently, none of that's the issue. I, I just think it's physically the clutch itself. Um, you know, we've, we pulled the inspection plate off the transmission, looked up in there and everything is just coated in oil. So, um, I, it just, it's slipping a lot uh, and not really when I, even when I get on it, it's just, you know, getting into the higher RPMs, I can start getting that smell of the burning clutch through the, um, through the transmission tunnel. So unfortunately I think I'm going to have to go ahead and start considering pulling the engine and transmission out sooner than I had planned. But, um, that's fine because I've got oil leaks and other things I need to take care of. You know, it is getting winter time. It's actually like 30 degrees outside today. So it'll be a perfect time to go ahead and get that pulled out. Um, but today I am going to get the car lifted up, um, unbolt the, uh, the muffler, the drive shaft, and get, and get everything out of the way so I can get the rear diff pulled out. Once I get it pulled out, I'll be able to look and see. I think it just needs to be resealed, and, and I've got gasket here, um, RTV to put around the uh, the back of the uh, the uh, diff. But I'll clean it up, maybe spray some paint on it if it looks like it needs that. I've also got. I don't think it's leaking from the axle seals or the front seal, but I went ahead and purchased those, and while we're in there, we might as well go ahead and replace them. So, um, and then. That's gonna have, while the RTV is drying, I'm gonna look at replacing the fuel filter and potentially relocating it to behind the rear subframe so that it's it's more accessible. As, as anybody has ever had an FD knows, the fuel filter is an absolutely terrible spot. It's directly above the uh, diff and, and you can replace the filter without taking the diff out or, or really doing any serious uh, disassembly, but it's a huge pain in the ass. So um, relocating that to the rear subframe will make it more accessible. Um, I'll have to see if I've got everything on hand to do that and see what condition my, my OEM bracket and all that is. So, um, I'm going to look at that. I may not be able to get it all done today, but we'll see. First thing I need to do is get this transmission jack assembled and then get the car lifted up on jack stands and then start disassembly. So a quick update on where I'm at. The factory service manual basically says take off the drive shaft, um, take out the PPF, take out uh, various things underneath the car to you know get access to the rear diff. So what I've done is I've removed the muffler. I removed just the bolts that go at the end of the drive shaft into the rear diff. I've removed those so the drive shaft is disconnected but it's still um, you know supported and, and hanging in uh, up underneath the car. There's two trays that kind of shield different components underneath the car. I just went ahead and took those out because they're easy to take off and just get them out of my way. Um, what else? I've, I've taken the brake calipers and I've taken them off of the uh, um, their brackets and just got them hanging up here out of the way. I disconnected the upper control arm and then also um, the uh, control uh, link. I went ahead and disconnected both of those so that this could fall out of the way and that gives enough length uh, to be able to pull the drive shafts out. Now mine were both still um, you know, connected to the rear differential. So I had to pry on them a little bit and just enough force and they just kind of popped out. So they're completely separated from the rear diff, just supported right here for now. I have everything out of the way uh, in order to pull the diff down. Now I did not remove the PPF. I think I can remove the bolts and try to maybe rotate and lift the diff up out of the way so that um, you know I don't, I don't have to take that whole assembly off. And then I think I have like four or six bolts left to, to pop out and the whole the whole diff should be able to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a tray and drain out this uh, gear oil. Then we should be able to lower the differential using the transmission jack and get it out from underneath the car. All right, so I, I got the diff out and I'll just say a couple things about doing this job. Um, doing it on the, on the ground on jack stands is extremely difficult. You just don't have enough clearance I mean, I actually ended up having to take the diff off the transmission jack just to slide it out from underneath the car. Um, 
the factory service manual wasn't explicitly clear, but the e-brake, there's a bracket that holds both of the e-brake cables as they split off to go towards each wheel. Um, you'll want, it, it's kind of a, it's right on the top right here. And it's, you basically have to feel for it. It's a 12 millimeter. Um, so once you get your, uh, you know, get an open-ended, you know, wrench or something on there, you can get this off. I could see the, the right side emergency brake cable and I was actually able to get it off the bracket, but I didn't realize that the driver's side, or, or I'm sorry, the left-hand side was also on that bracket. So I would recommend definitely doing this on a lift. I think if you had more clearance underneath, um, I did get this out without taking the PPF off, but it was extremely difficult. There's four threaded studs, you know, two up at the top and two on the bottom. And they really, you have to get those up and over the, the, the holes that are in the PPF. And there's just not a lot of clearance down there. I'd probably follow the factory service manual if you're gonna do this and get that PPF off, um, which again, it, it's like you have to take the drive shaft out and the PPF and it's a lot of extra steps, but I think it would make getting this out. I mean, the time that it took me to get this out would have been offset by the time of me taking the PPF and the, and the, and the drive shaft off and that would have just made getting this out easier. So anyway, so I got this out. So it, uh, it doesn't look in too bad a shape. Um, I don't really, I mean, it's a little rusty, but you know, I think everything was, was in okay shape. Um, this probably something I should have thought of ahead of time was to get uh, new bushings, but these actually don't look too bad. Um, they're not split. They don't feel, um, too soft. And then, the, you know, the, the, the um, the spacers that sit on the outside, they, they're actually in really good shape too. So I think I'll be okay, um, but it's something to keep in mind the next time I do want to need to take this out. So the next thing I need to do is get this cover off and go ahead and scrape off this old uh, RTV. Uh, I'm gonna get this on the bench and that's what uh, I'm gonna work on next. Here's what everything looks like once you have the rear diff out. And again, there's the, the PPF that you, you know really should try to get out of the way when you're doing this. So right here is the, the rear subframe and then right up there is the fuel pump. So I think what I'll be able to do is get a couple, um, maybe three feet of 5 16 inch high pressure fuel line. And I'll actually be able to, to move that maybe, maybe down here on the left side of the rear, uh, rear subframe. Um, basically I'll try to reuse the, it would probably be ideal to find a different fuel filter. Um, the Mazda fuel filter for this car is like 70 bucks or something. It was pretty expensive. I, I can't remember. I'll put an annotation on the screen, but it was very expensive. A cheaper, you know, K&N or, you know, from another car um, would probably be the better way to go and save you some money in the long run. But I think for now, I'll just take the bracket off the car and then redrill and tap some holes maybe in the subframe in a place that hopefully won't cause any any weak points but um you know mount it somewhere you know, maybe up here actually because this is nice and flat so um when it you know that that will be something i'll go ahead and do just because after getting this rear diff out i don't probably want to do that anytime soon uh do it again anytime soon but anyway this is uh what the underside of the car looks like and there's both axles and i'll just point them out while i'm down here but the factory service manual does say to replace these clips when you uh, when you replace the when you pull them out of the diff. Uh, so I do I, I do have those. And the factory service manual also says that the uh, the four bolts that come out of the uh, the diff on into the PPF really should be replaced. But I did go ahead and order some. But when I got them, they're they're clearly not the right part number. Um, so I'll probably just go ahead and reuse the ones I have. Uh, they don't look like there are any issues with them, but. So this is actually a week since the last clip. And that night I got the rear differential pulled out of the car. I did pop the cover off, which was, um, it wasn't that difficult. I, I think there definitely was some leaks coming from around the edges of the, where it was sealed. But um, the gear oil was extremely clean in the diff. There was no debris. Um, the, the insides look great. There, I mean, there's really no um, no no complaints about what I found inside uh, the differential with the gears and the housing. Now, when I popped the cover off, I found um, lots of little cracks. Um, I mean, really, it's it's over the whole surface of the uh, differential. My initial thoughts were maybe you know this was. Uh, 
casting marks or something like that, but I kind of stopped what I was doing that night because it was getting late. Uh, did some research online to see if I could find you know anybody else that's had, maybe you can see that there in the camera. Um, but you know, see if anybody else had this issue and really I didn't find a whole lot of, of, of information online. Now, um, my car is a 1992, which would probably have been the first production run of, or in that first production run of vehicles. So there's a chance that there could have been some flaws with the original casting that was a corrected um, in later productions, but I decided that it was probably better just to go ahead and replace this. You know, finding an original RX-7, um, you know, brand new RX-7 diff cover is, is kind of difficult. Uh, I'm sure they are available, but um, they're definitely on back order or special order. Um, you know, the good news is that an RX-8 diff cover will also match the RX-7 uh, differential. Now, they're not a direct swap you know, the entire pumpkin isn't a direct swap from RX-8 to RX-7. The mountings are a little bit different. The gears are the same and the cover is the same. Um, so those can be swapped out. So, uh, you know, after, after looking at the RX-8 covers, there's basically two versions. There's the 04 to 08, which basically looks like the, the, you know, for all practical purposes, it looks almost identical to the RX-7 diff cover. Um, some of these fins are actually longer, but uh, for the most part, it's the same. After 08, the, uh, the RX-8 diff covers have an additional um, cooling fin that come off the side here. And that's what I was looking for, but um, as with most things, those are in pretty high demand. And it was about a six to eight week um, uh, wait time for those to get shipped from Japan. Um, and I called numerous sources and I, I, I tried to find uh, used ones and, and really I, I struck out everywhere I went. The RX-7 gears in the differential are 410 gears. Um, I believe that's universal on all the, the manual transmissions. Uh, some of the JDM versions of the differentials have 430 gears, um, and then the automatics have 310 gears. So uh, I did back that. I did check my gears, and I do have the 410 gears in my differential. Um, the RX-8, uh, the 2004 to 2008 RX-8 differential has 444 gears. Um, and then I think the anything after 2008 has something like 480, 488, something like that. So um, I'm not going to do a gear swap on this project, uh, but I went ahead and bought an 04, 08 used differential that was in really good shape, supposedly had low miles. Um, and by the time I bought that, it was just, you know, I paid like $220 for the whole entire differential. So I've got the gears and the, a new how, uh, cover. And so I'll show you that real quick. So here's the cover I pulled off of the, I think the mine came from a 2006 RX-8. Um, and you know, here, like I said, you can kind of see the shape is basically the same. You know, there's just larger and longer fins on 2008 cover. Uh, the oil is interesting. Um, it's very sticky and, and uh, you know, almost smells burnt. So I'm not sure if they use the wrong oil when they, when they filled this up. It does look like it's been resealed at least one other time. Um, for now, I'm going to get both of these cleaned up, really, just so just to confirm that this one is pretty cracked through, and then just to, to see what condition this one's in. So uh, I'm just going to spray these down with brake clean, brake parts cleaner, and scrub them with some brushes and and you know whatever uh, cleaning tools I've got laying around. All right, so this is the original cover that came off my differential. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time cleaning it up because we're not going to reuse it. I will put it on the RX-8 uh, differential just to keep it sealed for now, but you know. I don't know, it's just really hard to tell. I don't know if any of these cracks actually show up on this side. You know, there's always a chance that it could just, well, I don't know, maybe the cracks are around the uh, the filler hole do look like they, they propagate through. So it, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna reuse this one, but like I said, I'll use it to, to seal up the RX-8 um, differential. And then this is the, the one I took off the RX-8. Um, I did did uh, a thorough cleaning on it. Um, I didn't polish it just because it's it's going to get dirty again. But for now, what I need to do is I need to get all this old gasket material off. I need to take off this uh, this mounting bracket. Um, it is all quite rusty, so I do want to go ahead and scrub all this down and and, and just do a, a light coat of uh, paint spray paint. And then once I've done that and cleaned it up, um, I am going to replace both of the seals for the axles. And then the, I've got the seal for the pinion. Um, I'll do that as well. There's oil all over the outside of it. 
Um, so that's something I'm definitely going to want to get cleaned off before I paint. I'm going to get my, uh, my impact gun and I'm going to go ahead and get this brace off. use a, a scraper and really probably a plastic um, you know putty knife or something would be advisable just so you don't you know you, you don't want to scratch this surface um, I will be extremely careful with this um, this will just get the bulk of it off and I've kind of got the uh, the differential is kind of naturally leaning forward a little bit so hopefully most of the debris wants to uh, to fall out into my bag um, but then we'll go through and try to clean anything else up Somebody has worked on this rear diff. Uh, I've, I've noticed a few things with the diff that um, wouldn't have been done uh, at the factory. And, and one of those was somebody had used something, screwdriver or pry bar, uh, to take that diff off at some point in time. And it actually gouged, you know, it actually created a decent uh, uh, mark in the, um, in the cover itself, which is just aluminum, so it doesn't take very much. But um, if I were to line this back up, there's also a, a significant gouge in the flange of the differential. Um, it is a little proud of the surface. Once I, get all, once I get all this cleaned up, I'll probably take a file and just lightly file this back down flush with the surface, but um, I think the RTV will fill that in, but there's always the cheap way to do something and then the, the right way to do something. And, and when you go cheap, sometimes you can, you can do more harm than good. So, you know, there's some play on how this goes and I'm able to get a, a you know, a flat blade, um, a metal um, putty knife or something right along that edge, a couple taps with a rubber mallet and it just popped off. The one that was on the RX-8 was really stuck on there. You know, you don't want to go in at an angle because it'll do just like what happened on this one. You'll, you'll deform the, the cover and you'll leave a gouge um, in the diff housing. So uh, I'll have to take care of that once I get it cleaned up. But I'm not going to bore you guys with uh, any more cleaning of this, then I'll have to make the decision on whether I want to go ahead and tape it off and get it spray painted, which is probably what I'll do. And then once I've done that, then I'll go ahead and pop all these seals off and get those replaced. But um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. So before I go any further, I just wanted to show you guys a quick tip. Um, if you don't know how to figure out what your uh, gear ratio is on your differential. Now, a lot of differentials will have markings, which this one has some markings, but it doesn't really make sense to me and I'm not gonna spend the time researching and figure out what that means. So, um, if you have your cover off, really this is about the only way you can, I mean, this is the easiest way to do it is when you have the cover off. So, um, what the gear ratio is, is basically the ratio of number of revolutions, the input, uh, you know, from your drive shaft to the ring gear. So if you have a, a, a gear ratio of four, you'd have four revolutions of the pinion to one revolution of the, of the ring gear. So um, knowing that the RX-7 has 410 is the common um, uh, gear ratio for manual trans, 3.7 is the gear ratio for an automatic, and then some of the JDM um, uh, versions of the RX-7 did have a 4.3 gear ratio. So um, what I'm gonna do is just arbitrarily, I'm gonna pick this. Um, I have a mark here from where this is where um, I took one, I, I have a corresponding mark on the uh, drive shaft. So there's just a little mark here that I know that I put there. So I'm just gonna put that at the 12 o'clock position uh, just as an arbitrary point. You could mark this or do whatever you wanna do. Um, on yours. So I've got that at the 12 o'clock position and then just pick a reference. It, it doesn't really matter. So in, in this situation, there's some markings here. So there's a 17 marked on the ring gear and it's almost directly in line with this bolt, which is almost directly in line with this bolt. So uh, I know you can't quite see that, but basically imagine there's a bolt just like this over here and there's a 17, uh, someone's marked on this with this, you know, the number seven 
it lines up with a bolt that's you know over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to count how many times I have to spin uh, the uh, where the pinion is, the pinion gear is at until this comes back around. Um, again, this is just all arbitrary. You could do whatever. You could draw your own marks or references. So um, basically, I'm going to start spinning this. And then four revolutions, which um, just by eyeballing it, you know, a little bit further right there gets my seven back lined up with the bolt. So uh, just knowing that this, you know, I don't know exactly what the gear ratio is, but knowing that the RX-7 only had a 410 or, or 3.7 or 4.3. So I, I've confirmed this is a 410 uh, rear end. So um, that's just a quick tip in case you guys get a, a diff that you, it's unknown to you or there isn't any clear markings and or you're out in the field or something you don't know how to read. The numbers that are on here, you can divide them out and get your gear ratio. But again, the markings on here don't make sense. So, so that's one way you can confirm your gear ratios.